All attendees are in listen-only mode. G'day everybody, welcome back to uh, another uh, Ask the Expert webinar and we've got a few new people who've joined us uh, since last week so uh, just to recap on what the purpose is, um, I'm covering uh, the, what's happening globally and also in the Australian market and predominantly am answering questions that you may have from uh, anything relating to the stock market uh, or, um, or particular trades. Um, now we do have a, a mixture of, uh, of current members of Specialist Share and uh, as well as, uh, as some non-members as well. So as I covered last week, um, in all fairness to current members, I'm not going to uh, elaborate on what our current uh, trades are that we're in, um, other than just to observe at the moment that we've certainly got some absolute uh, excellent trades on the on the go at the moment. So uh, just a bit of a uh, summary, or in fact before I do that, uh, as I also mentioned, I try and uh, put a little bit of a smile on your face on all the webinars that I do. I was unable to find anything appropriate for day, for today that was that was um, outwardly humorous, but uh, this is a fascinating story that's unfolding with uh, with Wayne Swan um, taking on all the billionaires around Australia in uh, in the in the financial press and the billionaires around Australia. I understand mounting a paid television campaign uh, in response. So um, I think there's going to be some uh, some pretty good laughs and. Uh, and a lot of interesting things come out of this little stoush over the next uh, few months. I reckon Wayne's biting off more than he can chew myself. Now, just a reminder that uh, everything that we do is general advice only. Uh, it's not personal advice. We're not taking account of your specific circumstances. And we are operating under the license of um, Financial Services of Australia. So let's do a quick global recap. The S&P index, uh, this is getting boring, this is about the sixth or eighth week in a row I've been saying this, it's still really defying the odds and um, oh and by the way these, uh, these webinars I guess flow on from the weekend general market updates that I do that are um, on YouTube so uh, you also can, can follow uh, the trends along there as well. So the S&P um, is, is still hanging up there, although what I'm seeing is that uh, it's largely hanging up there because of the very large cap stocks. We've got stocks like Apple and uh, GE and a lot of the Dow 30 stocks are doing quite well and they're really holding the index up and giving the appearance that the market is actually doing quite well. But underneath, it's, um, it's a bit like a, uh, a duck going across a lake that doesn't, everything appears calm and normal on the surface. but Underneath is um, this frantic activity, and if you if you go down and look at something like the Russell 2000 index, which is uh, the equivalent of our small to medium cap stocks, then uh, that index has also rolled over in the last week, along with uh, the transportation index that rolled over about three weeks ago, and uh, and to my mind the banking index is is really starting to run out of upward momentum. So. The way that I see the U.S. market is that it's um, it looks okay at the index level, but underneath um, things are stretched, and probably there's a fair amount of profit taking going on. So it's just a time to exercise uh, some care, I believe. Now the correction that we've got to have because markets just do not keep going up in a straight line, uh, so we are going to get a correction, and uh, it should be pretty mild because the momentum that we've had in the market since, well since October when the market bottomed, but particularly since mid-December uh, down to uh, around the 13.25 or 12.95 mark I think should should see it out. So that's only about a 3 to maybe 5% correction. So I think it should be pretty mild because there's just so much momentum there. Following that I would expect the market to then uh, push on and um, and head up towards uh, the 1440 mark. Now I've noticed a couple of you have just got your hands up. Uh, if I can just ask you just to cancel those little hand signals there um, because I'll be taking questions at the end. So that'll be great, thank you. Now one of the reasons that I think the market has remained so buoyant 
in the face of what could potentially be uh, a few unsettling things is uh, the ECB in December, which really corresponds with when the market really started moving fairly strongly and consistently. The ECB dropped half a trillion in in December and they've uh, just dropped half a trillion in again last Wednesday. And that's certainly helped to, um, to calm market sentiment a lot and I think it's taken away that fear that the European financial system could come crashing down. Now I think ultimately that possibly still could happen to a degree but to me central banks have stepped up to a degree now that traders and investors think well there's ultimately there's no real serious worry here because the central banks are just going to step in anyway and that's a large part of what's behind what's been going on in the market. So the really big question for me is how will a correction in the US, even if it's a mild one, how will that impact our small cap stocks? Now that's a question that really uh, no one can be sure of the answer. All I can offer you is my experience from 25 years of doing this and I've been through so many cycles where um, and I see it over and over again where everyone gets increasingly excited about what's going on in the small cap space. They commit more and more funds, they take greater and greater risks, they start buying in at higher and higher prices and then all of a sudden there's a very savage uh, turn in the market. So just a, a word of caution, I'm not saying you shouldn't participate because it is an excellent period but uh, just be mindful of what you're doing because I've seen this just dozens and dozens and dozens of times again and uh, you know ultimately there will be uh, there will be a corrective phase. Now the Shanghai index still rising so that's supportive. Uh, anyone that's um, that's telling you that uh, the property market and the general economy in China is about to fall over is um, either not reading uh, the index, not looking at the charts or they just have no idea what they're talking about because um, the Shanghai index and I'll, I'll cover off quickly on these um, when I go to the chart charting um, but that index is still rising very strongly so you can bet if there was anything going on underneath that um, the Shanghai index would not be going up the way that it is. Now our market typically is lagging significantly, it's very frustrating, there's a number of factors to it, one of them is the political landscape that keeps shifting the goalposts, makes overseas investors nervous but also the high Australian dollar is an issue for the larger caps as well, overseas investors looking to buy our banks, BHP, Rio, Woodside etc are um, having to pay a lot more than they did when our dollar was lower so um, I'm sure that's part of the issue. Now the energy sector remains our best performing part of the market. Uh, I am expecting the, the majors though will retrace a little bit and probably some of the small caps will as well but that's certainly been uh, an area where the, the most activity has been. But for me it's still very much a stock picker's market. Uh, this is not a market where you just want to buy into anything and everything uh, and, and expect it to go up. It's, it's a very, very specific stock picker's market and getting good entries um, is very critical. Now what I've been encouraging all our members to do uh, very clearly is to make a decision about the level of exposure that you're comfortable in um, and that you would want to have in the in the market at the moment if we were to get a, a bit of a sudden turn down for a short period of time. I, I don't expect it to last long but small cap stocks can lose 10 or 20 percent very, very quickly, um, sometimes in the matter of just a, a couple of hours. So you need to be clear about what level of exposure is, uh, is comfortable for you. And you also need to be crystal clear about where you're going to get in, where you're going to get out and how you're going to manage your risk, in, in particular the latter. Um, again, I see too many traders over the years that just get excited by what's going on and they just throw the rule book out the window, that's if they ever had a rule book and uh, they just forget about managing risk thinking that all that's on offer is, um, is upside profit. So um, yeah, just a few words of caution. Now we had some uh, staggering moves in gold and silver on Wednesday night. Uh, for me, and I've written about this to members, it was um, pretty blatant market manipulation 
um, when you really read what specifically went on. And uh, there are vested interests that don't want to see gold and silver go up substantially in price. Um, there, are, um, there are large investment banks and hedge funds that are holding massive short positions in the futures market. Uh, certainly central banks don't want to see gold and silver rocketing off the planet because that lessens their ability to control the monetary systems. So um, the manipulation played out on Wednesday night. Uh, there's no other way to explain how gold could fall $90 in the space of an hour and a half. And uh, one of the things you've got to recognise here is that there is two markets. One is the market that relates to the physical buying and selling of gold and that market is as robust as ever. The other market is the futures paper market, which is when vested interests do what they do, becomes a little bit of a short-term casino. So the gold market got, got belted down. Uh, it will now go into a normal period of some leverage unwinding. Uh, there'll be plenty of hedge funds that have still got futures contracts that they'll want to unwind. And it will also be subject just to normal crowd behaviour as well. So we'll take a look at the gold chart and, and where I think um, the better entry points may be. Silver was the same and it'll be the same pattern unfolding uh, in silver. Uh, oil's in a very strong uptrend, but again, it's time for a bit of a pullback and I think we're probably just seeing that a little bit now. Uh, we saw oil come down a bit on um, Friday night and um, some of the oil majors in Australia came down today as well. Now before we move on to the opportunities, we'll just go and have a look at, uh, at a few charts. So we'll start first of all with the Australian market and this is on a uh, daily chart. So this is the ASX 200. Hopefully you can see that fairly clearly. And what you can see is that we are largely forming up a triangular pattern. kind of a flag kind of pattern that will eventually resolve itself one way or the other and it's getting very, very uh, tight and, and very much to the pointy end at the moment. Um, which way it breaks will obviously depend a, a lot on the US market but um, it's, really done, it's really done nothing since March sorry, that's not March of 2012 at all, it's October of 2011. So really the market has done very little for the best part of six months and it's getting tighter and tighter. There will be a significant breakout move and we'll just have to wait and see which way it goes. With me looking very positively on the S&P, I would expect that it will break out to the upside but um, the Australian market really has lagged so badly compared to the US market that, um, that it's hard to know. Now part of the reason for that has been the financials. This is the financial index on a weekly chart. So you can see it's done very, very little now for about eight or ten weeks. Let's have it materials which covers predominantly BHP and Rio and you can see uh, on a weekly chart uh, it also hasn't been doing very well over the last four to six weeks. Whereas energy has been much more positive and we had a, a very big week two weeks ago um, and now it's just basically pulled back to that breakout zone which is pretty normal. But the index that's done much better, this is our small ordinaries index, the uh, XSO and you can see that uh, it's really done quite well since, um, since the start of this year and it's up uh, nearly 350 points since uh, the start of this year. So that's been really quite a good move. So if you look at those compared to the S&P, this is on a daily basis, but you can see the S&P has really just had a, a wonderfully steady and stable run since uh, late December. It's tucked right up against a, a double top at the moment and uh, really there's so many things that are overstretched it's not funny but um, it's still refusing to, to keel over just yet. Now this is the Shanghai index as you can see we've now got seven weeks of consecutive higher closes. Um, to me there isn't a lot of fear in the, in the Shanghai market at the moment otherwise the index wouldn't be doing that. It's recovered uh, in excess of 300 points. 
in the last couple of months. Now let's have a look at gold and silver. Uh, this is gold on a daily chart. Now the uh, this second big red candle here on Friday is not correct. It's an error in the data, uh, which we're attempting to get fixed. But um, it's really Wednesday night that was the the big move. What would normally take place here is that we would the primary trend is to the upside. I believe this is. Uh, this is the, the first leg to the upside that we've seen, which started on the 29th of December and basically finished a couple of days ago. I would expect now some kind of three-wave pattern to the downside, which is the way that crowd behaviour normally plays out. Uh, it's probable that we've, we may have seen the first leg down and that took us down to exactly, and I use Fibonacci retracement levels to a great degree, along with a number of other indicators. Um, I don't ever use any indicator in isolation, um, but we've declined to exactly the 38.2% level and then had a little bit of a bounce and it may well be that we'll, we've still got a little bit more upside, but I'm still expecting some kind of ABC pattern to the downside with probably 1658 as being the target on gold. 1626 is a possibility, but I would expect that 1653, 1658 is probably more like it. Now if we look at silver, again I'm expecting the same kind of pattern to play out and my targets on silver are 3311 and 3177. Now those are only targets, once we get into the vicinity of those targets it's then very much a matter of looking at how the price action has got there, looking at other indicators, um, so don't take those as gospel. It's only a structure to give us a, a guide and uh, we need to examine the action more closely around those areas. Okay, so that pretty much uh, covers the, uh, the basics. The only other chart I want to have a look at is um, the US dollar index because currencies really do control the stock markets to a, a very large degree. The US dollar index has been in downtrend now. Uh, since it turned in uh, mid-January. At this stage it's too early to say whether it's now bottomed and is heading back up again. It's come down to this 150 day moving average, the green line, which has provided support for it in the past. So I need some more information to know whether uh, this is now heading back up again. If it does, that is not good for stocks or commodity prices or if indeed this is just a pause and it's going to continue down further which would be very good for stock markets and commodity prices. So that's something yet we're yet to see play out. Now just looking at where the opportunities are, um, obviously the oil and gas sector is the strongest sector but look it's getting very frothy at the moment and again I've seen this pattern before when I run scans and I get just heaps and heaps of small cap stocks that are just firing off for no apparent reason. There was a really good example today, um, stock or several stocks, but in particular a stock called uh, Norwest Energy, which uh, jumped from four cents to over six cents uh, on the basis of a press report um, that, okay, it was positive, but my goodness, to jump 30% or more in a day on a press report is the sort of stuff that just shows how excited the market's getting. Now, this could continue for a little while, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is going to stop tomorrow, this, this could continue for months, but all I'm saying is just be careful, I've seen people get caught time and time and time again when the market gets this frothy. So your entries and your trade management, really important. The second major opportunity area is with gold producers and there's been a frustrating period as to why gold stocks have not really uh, performed anywhere near like the underlying gold price has. But uh, if we do get a bit more of a, a pullback in gold, then I think we're probably going to see some even better setups. My view prior to last Wednesday night, I, I had the impression looking across all the stocks that I, all the gold stocks that I research and, and track, my clear impression was that they were just starting to get into gear in terms of, um, of starting to play catch up with the price of gold. 
Now, what happened on Wednesday night was unexpected. That'll slow the market down for a little bit, but uh, I think we're we're very, very close to um, some really good runs in, in selected gold producers. Now, resource companies have also done exceedingly well. Um, there are still a few good ones that haven't moved as yet, and uh, I've got members pretty zeroed in on, on those ones. But for a lot of the others, they already have moved very strongly, and um, so you don't really want to be buying into them at this point in time. But there will be some good entry opportunities on pullbacks, and uh, again, that's what we're um, what we're focused on. So again, my message here is beware not to overpay, as um, as the upside uh, is already priced into some of these stocks. In fact, some of them have, have become even a little bit uh, over uh, overvalued. So again, just uh, just a bit of care needed there. Now, just before I go onto the charts and take your questions, uh, I've had a number of emails about the investors uh, program that we run, and um, just to let you know that there is a webinar tomorrow night. Again, it's um, it's similar to this webinar. It's uh, it's purely um, for informational purposes. So, just some details on that. Uh, it's tomorrow night. It's 7 p.m. Uh, Western Standard Time. Uh, it will be recorded, so if that's a bit late for anybody, uh, it will be available. Uh, just a quick snapshot of, of what I'll be covering. It's uh, basically the I think the topics that are of most interest to to people. Why the funds management industry has just failed all of us so very badly over the years. Um, the specific keys to smart investing, which there's some significant differences between investing and and trading. Um, I'm going to show some examples of just some wonderful wealth generating uh, companies and uh, and potentials as well, and uh, and then just cover off what it is that we bring to the table that really makes all the difference to the ultimate outcome that investors get. So uh, if you um, would like to uh, attend that and haven't done so, then um, just drop us an email and we can send you a link to register. So from here, I'll uh, move on to your questions, and um, I've got a couple here to start with. There's a question here about NWS. Um, what do I think about the 38% increase today? I think you mean NW, NWE. Would that be what you mean, Peter? It's not NWS. NWS is News Corporation. So I assume that you mean NWE. And this was the stock that I referred to. Um, let's have a look, first of all, on a weekly chart, which is how I like to start with everything that I do. So we had the start of a move up um, over the last few weeks. But you've really, if you look at the volume, particularly the volume over the last couple of weeks, it had really tailed off and was pretty non-existent. So that's kind of what put me off. Um, NWE. Now it's gapped up from four cents to um, five and a half, and ended up closing almost at six cents today. Um, I really that that kind of action makes me nervous on the on the back of a press report. If the company had had um, done some drilling and made a discovery, fair enough. But when it's just a press report, um, I really don't like to see that. So. Um, yeah, just just take care because markets have a habit of filling these gaps. So um, wouldn't be surprised to see the price at some stage come back and and fill this gap here between four cents and and five and a half. Now the next question we've got relates to another uh, oil and gas stock called uh, Maverick, uh, MAD Maverick Drilling and Exploration. This is it on a weekly chart. Um, now the question here relates to a re-entry price. So we've had, you can see on the weekly chart, we've just had a staggering um, six-week run that's taken it massively above the moving averages. We've run from 20 cents to nearly 90 cents in six weeks, and um, which is a phenomenal run. So all things do tend to come back. So for me, the question is, uh, and, and fundamentally, this is a pretty good story. I've been doing some homework on this stock, and uh, the fundamentals are, um, are much better than what I 
uh, understood a couple of weeks ago. So I would be looking, and this is again, this is just a structure, this is not gospel, it depends very much on how the price gets there. Um, I'd be looking at the levels at 71 and 62 and possibly 54, but I doubt it because I think this is um, the fundamentals behind this stock are, are really strong. So I'd be looking at 71 and 62, but um, again, please do not take these as just automatic entry points. Uh, it depends on how the price gets there and what the market's doing in general, your overall exposure. There's a whole lot of questions need to be asked. The other point I would make whilst we had a bit of a positive day today after the company came back after, um, um, I think they announced some capital raising details. Volume wasn't particularly big today. So I still see this as, uh, as looking for a, a bit of a pullback. Now the next question relates to uh, FAR. Um, now, how do I see FAR a 12 cent buy? So I'm not sure I understand that question. So um, Peter, perhaps if you can expand on that because I don't understand it's trading at the moment at um, at 4.7. So let's have a look uh, weekly. It's quite a good looking pattern. We had three solid weeks up. It wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be at all surprising to see a couple of weeks of um, of pause and a little bit of a pullback. So if we go to the daily chart we're getting that over the last couple of days. Volumes are much lower. Um, we need to unwind. This uh, got a bit overbought. Price got a, a little bit of ahead of itself. So a bit of a pullback for uh, for a few days would be good and healthy. Okay. Well, there don't appear to be any other questions at this stage. I'll just do a a check here that uh, if anybody's unsure how to actually ask a question, if you can just raise your hand, just click on that little hand signal. Okay, no one, no one in that position. So it looks like we just don't have any other particular questions at the moment. So to summarise, the way that I see the market at the moment is um, it's pretty positive. I would expect the market to remain. Uh, basically positive with potentially some good ox upside in selected stocks probably through to May. Um, we're going to get a little correction at least of some sort between now and then and it's really due now and would be fantastic to kind of clear the decks a little bit and give us, um, give us a, a better run at some of these small cap stocks. But um, May, May, June, July very, very often is uh, is weaker period of the of the year. It's certainly a period when the U.S. market really cools off. Everyone goes on holidays, and uh, and generally there's nowhere near as much momentum in the market as um, uh, as there are at other times of the year. The other comment I'd make is that seasonally this is um, quite a good time for um, for gold. From now for the next couple of months is seasonally good for the gold price. So that's why I'm not expecting uh, too much uh, downside in gold. Okay, well look, uh, there aren't any other questions, so uh, I'll wrap it up for now and uh, look forward to uh, talking with you next week. Cheers.